we now consider the force equation in special theory of relativity. Our aim is to find a covariant generalization of Newton's second law of motion. Now, Newton's equation uh, in a particular inertial frame of reference has the following form d by dt of pi equals fi, where uh, i can take values 1, 2, 3, etc. and p1, p2, p3, uh, etc. are the Cartesian components of uh, the momentum which is defined as p vector is equal to mv or in terms of the Cartesian components I may write this as pi is equal to mvi where m is the mass measured in that particular inertial frame. Obviously, this only describes the spatial components of the forces and uh, the time derivatives of uh, the spatial components of the momentum and it is certainly not a covariant equation in the Minkowski space. And uh, the physical law should be invariant to all inertial observers and therefore uh, the second law of motion should be rewritten uh, in a more generalized form which is uh, the so-called covariant form which will be a tensor equation in the Minkowski space. Now this Fi are the Cartesian components of the force uh, in the chosen frame of uh, ch chosen inertial frame of reference. Now we consider uh, the covariant generalization of the momentum as we have already seen uh, the spatial components of the momentum will become the three components of a four momentum when we generalize uh, so that you know pi's can be written in terms of p mu's where mu takes values 1, 2, 3 uh, and 4. Now the fourth component p4 uh, will be related to m0 times uh, gamma c where gamma is 1 by square root of 1 minus beta square beta is related to the velocity of uh, the particle concerned and c is the speed of light and m0 will be uh, the mass of the particle measured in its rest frame of reference. Now uh, this pi can be written as m0 gamma uh, vi where vi are uh, the usual velocity source of the particle the, the Cartesian components of the velocity of the particle measured in that particular frame of reference as we have already seen in the earlier class. So now uh, the Newton's equation which was earlier written as d by dt of pi as fi will be generalized to this form d by d tau, tau being the proper time, p mu being the components of the four momentum is equal to some g mu, where g mu is again uh, some other four vector uh, which will be related to the force vector. This equation uh, g mu will be chosen in such a way that given a particular frame of reference the first three components that is uh, g1, g2 and g3 which will be related to this derivative of p mu in the following way d by d tau of pi equal to g i for i equal to 1, 2 and 3 can be written to be in the general form, uh, in the form given by the Newton's equation in that particular frame of reference. For this, we first note that uh, d by d tau of p mu can be written as d by d tau of m0 times v mu because p mu is equal to m0 times uh, sorry, u mu, the four velocity, which is m0 times 
d by d tau of x min. So we have uh, d by d tau of p mu equal to d by d tau of m0, d by d tau of x mu. On the right hand side we have g mu. Now, d by d tau, since uh, the proper time tau is related to the time measured in that particular frame of reference, is given by uh, is related as uh, tau is related to t we can write this as dt by d tau times d by dt now dt by d tau was found to be equal to gamma so this equation now becomes uh, d by d tau equal to dt by d tau times d by dt acting on m0 times again this d by d tau becomes dt by d tau times d by dt of x mu. But again this is gamma and this is also gamma. So we have uh, taking this gamma to the right hand side it becomes 1 by gamma we can write d by dt of m0 gamma dx mu by d tau equal to 1 by gamma g mu and in a given inertial frame the spatial components are given by uh, mu equal to 1 2 and 3 so d by d tau dt of m0 gamma vi because you know dx i by dt is the component the, uh, the corresponding uh, cartesian component of the velocity in that particular inertial frame writing dx i by dt as vi we have d by dt of m0 gamma vi equal to g i by gamma now our uh, uh, Newton second law was found to be d by dt of p i equal to f i but then p i can be written as m times v i that should be equal to f i now our generalization of Newton's equation which was given by d by d tau of p mu equal to g mu Uh, in a particular inertial frame of reference should reduce to this equation where m is the mass measured in that frame of reference v is the velocity measured there and f is the force measured there. so this equation reconciles with this form the newton's equation if i can write m as m0 gamma because vi is already there and then fi is gi by gamma. So, so this equation would be a proper generalization of the Newton's second law provided we can make the identification that is m0 gamma equal to m that is the mass of the particle measured in the given inertial frame of reference is equal to m0 times gamma where uh, m0 is the rest mass of the particle and gamma is equal to 1 by square root of uh, 1 minus b square by c square and similarly gi by gamma is equal to f i or in other words g i is equal to gamma now we come back to uh, our earlier uh, relationship uh, which says that u mu d u mu by 
d tau equal to 0 and use this to arrive at the quantity u mu g mu. So we see that u mu g mu is equal to u mu then d by d tau p mu. Now uh, this p mu can be written as m0 u mu. Now m0 is mass measured in the frame of reference in which the particle is at rest. Therefore it is an invariant quantity independent of tau. And therefore it can come outside. So we will get m0 u mu d by d tau of u mu. But we have already seen that this quantity is 0. So m0 times 0 is equal to 0. Or in other words, the inner product of the 4 velocity with the 4 force is equal to 0. Now separating this into the so-called spatial component and the time components, I have uigi plus u4g4 is equal to 0, where i runs from 1 to 3. So u1, u2, u1, g1, u2, g2 plus u3, g3 plus u4, g4 is equal to 0. Now, uh, we know the 4 velocity u mu is given by uh, say gamma v1, v2, v3 and v4 which is c. Now, the corresponding covariant vector is given by u mu is equal to g mu nu, sorry, eta mu nu uh, u nu. But eta mu nu is a diagonal matrix and uh, u i is equal to eta i nu u nu and since it is a diagonal matrix, only diagonal terms matter. So this is equal to eta i i u i. Now eta i i for i running from 1 to 3 is simply minus 1. So u i is equal to minus of u i. So we get u i is equal to minus u i. And u 4 is equal to eta 4 nu nu. But this is equal to eta 4 4 u 4. Eta 4 4 is 1 and u 4 is equal to c and therefore this is equal to c. Uh, sorry, gamma c. So this is equal to gamma c. And uh, u i is equal to minus u i equal to minus gamma v i. So we have u mu as uh, gamma is common to all those components, so can be taken outside. Gamma times minus V1 minus V2 minus V3C. And GI uh, from this identification is written as gamma times FI. So that we have uh, UIGI summation is over I is equal to, so we have gi is gamma fi, so there is one gamma coming from ui and another gamma coming from this gi, so I have a gamma square, then u1 g1 is given by, u1 is gamma v1, so uh, and, and minus sign is also there, so v1, then from gi we have fi, so v1 f1, v2 f2 plus v3 f3 with an overall minus sign and this gamma square factor coming outside. But this is nothing but f dot b in that particular frame of reference. So u i g i is simply minus gamma square f dot b. But f dot b is the rate at which uh, energy is transferred to the particle in that frame. So, uh, that is the rate of energy transfer. Now we have uh, the equation uh, u mu g mu equal to 0, which means 
u i g i plus u four g four is equal to zero, but u four is equal to gamma c. So this is equal to gamma c. Then uh, g four is equal to uh, g four. Uh, so we haven't yet found what that is. So gamma c times g four. Now this quantity is u i g i is minus gamma square f dot b. And on the right hand side that is equal to zero. So which implies gamma c g to the power g four is equal to gamma square f dot b. And we can cancel one gamma. So uh, g to the power four would then be given by gamma f dot b. See. Now, uh, from our generalized force equation, so we, we got an expression for G4 in terms of F dot B, but we want to know what this quantity is. So, uh, from our generalized uh, equation, we have D by d tau of p4 is equal to g4 but g4 is equal to gamma by c dot e now uh, what is d by dt of p4 so p4 is gamma times m0 c Again, from the identification that we made earlier, m0 gamma should be equal to m, where m is the mass measured in that frame. So this is equal to mc. So this equation d by dt of p4 is sorry d by d tau of p4 is d by d tau of mc. But d by d tau can be written as dt by d tau times d by dt of mc but that is a dt by d tau is gamma so gamma times d by dt of mc so this left hand side becomes gamma times d by dt of mc so gamma d by dt of mc. Now this gamma uh, can be cancelled and this c can be taken inside since c is a constant I can write it as d by dt of mc square equal to f dot v. But f dot v is a rate at which energy is transferred in that inertial frame. Now d by dt of mc square is the rate of energy transfer therefore and therefore mc square should be related to the energy of the particle. So we identify, we make the identification that mc square is simply the energy of the particle. So we write m c square as e or in other words p4 is equal to m c but that is equal to e by c. So the four momentum may now be written as uh, gamma m v1 m v2, m v3 and e by c or maybe we can write it as p1, p2, p3 and the fourth component as e by c. Now we go back to computing the norm of this vector 
which is p mod square the four vector so which is p mu p mu but this is equal to p mod square is equal to p mu p mu is equal to m0 u mu m0 u mu but m0 are constants invariance or m0 square u mu mu but this is the norm square of the four velocity which is nothing but c square we have already seen this uh, in an earlier class so the norm square of the four momentum is m0 square c square but this norm square can also be written as pi pi plus p4 square equal to m0 square c square so now p4 square is equal to m0 square c square minus pi 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 is simply uh, the the norm square of uh, the three momentum in that particular frame of reference which we may write as p vector mod square and we have a plus sign because of the following p i p i now as we have already seen p i corresponds to if p i uh, uh, you know correspond to p1 p2 p3 the cartesian components of the momentum then p i will be given by g uh, sorry eta i nu p nu so since this is diagonal this would be eta i i p i eta i i for i equal to 1 to 3 is minus 1 so minus p i so when i take this inner product i will have a minus sign coming because of minus sign appearing here so minus p1 square uh, minus p2 square minus p3 square and this is minus of <coughs> the uh, norm square of the three vector in that frame of reference so then p4 is equal to mc and therefore p4 square is m square c square is equal to m0 square c square plus this p vector mod square now uh, e equal to m c square and therefore i can write this as m uh, square c to the power 4 by c square and then multiplying the whole equation with c square on the left hand side i have m square c to the power 4 which is e square equal to this multiplied by c square is p mod square c square and this multiplied by c square is plus m0 square c to the power 4 <coughs> So, this is uh, the famous energy equation. So far, we have considered generalization of the dynamics of a single particle uh, into corresponding equations in special theory of relativity. Now we need to consider generalization of the dynamics of a distribution of mass. Uh, so first we consider uh, the dynamics of a perfect fluid and this is done by first obtaining uh, the equation, the dynamical equations uh, of a perfect fluid in a particular frame of reference and then identify a covariant equation that reduces to this particular equation in the chosen frame. First of all, we start by uh, specifying what a perfect fluid is. Uh, a fluid consists of a large number of particles. Uh, and each particle will have uh, their own mass. And 
the velocities. But in the idealization of a perfect fluid, we can think of a particular uh, infinitesimally small region of space where we can think of uh, the particle, the fluid as having a particular density, a mass density, which is given by say a rho, it's a function of x and t. So uh, the density may change as we change the position as well as time and the velocity of the particles all the particles in that infinitesimally small region at the spatial position x at time t and this position has a density rho xt and all the particles are assumed to have a velocity given by the velocity corresponding to that particular spatial position at that particular time so the velocity of the particles of the perfect fluid are described by a velocity field which is a function of x and t. So all particles that are uh, in that particular infinitesimally small region of the fluid will all have the same velocity given by v x t. So instead of specifying the mass of individual particles, we can describe the fluid in terms of specifying the density at a particular position x and time t and also the velocities of all particles uh, uh, in an infinitesimally regi small region about x and t is given by uh, the, the value of the velocity field at that particular point. In addition, there is also a pressure field, which is uh, the force per unit area acting on uh, any uh, infinitesimally small area at the position x at time t. And uh, this force is acting normal to that uh, area element. So a perfect fluid can be completely described in terms of a mass density field rho, a velocity field v and a pressure field pressure at, uh, at every point x at time t. And in a given frame of inertial frame of reference, uh, it has to obey certain conservation laws. First of all, uh, the mass conservation law, it can be written in the differential form in the following way. d by dt of rho plus divergence of uh, the mass current. The mass current is given by density times velocity. So that is equal to zero. So this is the differential form of the mass conservation equation. Now the second one, is the Newton's law of, for an infinitesimally small fluid element. There, each particle will have a velocity given by the value of the velocity field at that point. So, if V is the velocity, uh, the acceleration of each particle at that point is dV by dt. And in that infinitesimally small region, there will be Per unit volume, there will be rho. Uh, so the mass of the total mass of the particles in that region will be equal to rho times the infinitesimally small volume. So per unit volume, mass is rho. So rho times dv by dt is the force acting per unit volume on the particles in that infinitesimally small region. But this is equal to First of all, the force due to the pressure. The force due to the pressure is given by uh, the negative gradient of the pressure field. And the pressure is assumed to be isotropic. That's why uh, we have a single uh, function of uh, space and time. P as a function of x and time. Plus, if there are other forces, mechanical forces acting on the system, the force per unit volume uh, due to those forces is given by F. 
So we have two equations describing the motion of a perfect fluid. The first of uh, first one is a conservation equation, the conservation of mass, which says that d rho by dt plus divergence of uh, the mass current, which is given by rho times v is equal to zero. And the second one is uh, we consider a unit. Uh, we consider an infinitesimally small volume uh, at a particular point in space and at a particular time and then uh, the force acting per unit volume can be written as rho times uh, the acceleration at that particular point because all those particles are assumed to have the same velocity at that particular point given by the velocity field of the fluid that acceleration is given by d by dt of u so rho times d by dt of u is what the force per unit volume is and uh, the mechanical sources are the pressure and uh, the force per unit volume acting due to uh, various you know, fields there. So the pressure is assumed to be isotropic and in that case the force per unit volume uh, due to the pressure is given by the negative gradient of the pressure and F correspond to the pressure due to other sources. Sorry, uh, F correspond to the force per unit volume due to other sources. Now, in the component form, we may write this equation as d rho by dt plus this is the divergence. So, this can be written as di, which is the derivative with respect to xi. So, di is equivalent to d by dxi times rho vi. Now, the summation is over i. i runs from 1 to 3 and this is in a Cartesian coordinate system. So, this is simply the divergence written in terms of summation over various components. So, this is equal to 0 and that is what I have written here. So, instead of uh, some uh, the, the dummy index i, I used the dummy index j, d, d rho by dt plus d by dx j rho vj equal to 0. Now, uh, the Newton second law for this fluid element was written as rho times dv by dt is equal to minus gradient of p plus in the component form, this may be written as d by dt of vi, the i component. Then this is the gradient. So, this can be written as dip plus fi. And that is what we have written here. So, one would notice that I have, uh, you know, a superscript i here, whereas uh, a superscript i appear in the denominator here and a superscript appear in the denominator in the numerator there. So, there is no consistency in using uh, these indices here, but that does not matter because in a Cartesian coordinate system in the three dimensional Euclidean space, uh, the uh, contravariant and covariant indices will not have any uh, difference. So, I can write it in this way without even, even uh, without having a consistency in writing them. Now, uh, this d by dt of vi correspond to the total derivative of the velocity field. Uh, vi is a function of x and t. So, if I want to take the total derivative of vi, I need to use the function of a function rule which will be like uh, dj which is d by dxj. So, first of all I can take the partial derivative with respect to time. So, this would be dvi by dt plus I take the derivative with respect to each component of x. 
So d by dxj of vi times dxj by dt. But then this dxj by dt is nothing but vj. So this left hand side becomes a row times dvi by dt that is this plus this is d by dxj of vi and that's what this is and this vj is written here plus now this is taken to the left hand side dp by dxr is equal to on the right hand side fi. Now we can go to this equation and multiply it with vi. So I will have vi here and a vi here. So that equation is vi d rho by dt plus vi d by dxj rho vj equal to 0. Now I can add these two equations. First of all consider this term and this term. So together that is rho dvi by dt plus vi d rho by dt which is nothing but d by dt of rho times vi. Using the product rule that becomes this plus that. So on the left hand side these two together give this term. Then uh, we have, so I can take this row inside and write this as uh, dvi by dxj times row vj. Taking this row and placing it there. Now over here I have derivative with respect to row vj and I multiply with vi. So that means this term and this term together become d by dxj of this times that. So that is a rho vj vi plus this term which is dp by dxi is equal to fi. So finally we have the following form d by dt of rho vi plus d by dxj rho vi vj sorry rho vj vi plus now this is actually d by dxi uh, of p but if i put a delta ij here and d by dxj here and put p here the summation over j with this delta ij makes it d by dxi so this becomes d by dxi of p so exactly this term and the right hand side is equal to fi. So we have now two equations. This equation and the mass conservation equation given by uh, uh, that is it. Yes. But if I multiply it with c, this will become rho c this will become d by dxj rho c vj. So I may write these equations together describing a perfect fluid as d by dxj uh, this one d by dxj rho vj vi plus delta ij p plus now this equation d by dt so this can be written as d by dct of rho c v i because I put one c in the numerator and one c in the denominator. Okay, so now c t is equal to x4 and therefore I may write this as d by dx4 rho v i c. And similarly, I had the other equation which was d by dt of rho plus dj 
rho vj equal to 0. Now, if I put a c over here, I can place, uh, so multiply it with c, I will have d rho c by dt and here I will have plus dj rho c vj. But then if I need to put ct here, I have to add an extra c in the numerator. So this become d by d of ct of rho c square, but ct is x to the power 4. So that is what I have written d by d x to the, uh, sorry, not x to the power 4, x4. So d by d x4 rho c square plus this term, that is d by dxj rho vj c is equal to 0. So these are the two equations representing a perfect fluid in a given frame of reference. Now these two equations can be written in the following form. I can write this as d by d mu rho v mu v i plus delta mu i p equal to f i for i running from 1, 2, etc. 3 and mu running from 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is because of the following. So I have j running from 1 to 3 and I have uh, d derivative with respect to x4 as well. So here d mu is derivative with respect to x mu which runs from 1 to 4. So the first three terms are d1, then uh, rho v1, vi, delta 1i, p, and mu runs from 1 to 3 in that case. So that is given by this. So I replace, I can write this as dj and whatever is uh, within the square brackets with mu replaced by j plus d4, then whatever is replaced with mu is equal to 4, here mu is equal to j. And this is exactly what this equation is. And similarly, this equation, so the, here derivative with respect to xj is taken and j runs from 1 to 4, 1 to 3. And I have derivative with respect to x4 here. So I can again write this as d mu, where mu run, run, runs from 1 to 4 with rho v mu c. Now remember, this can be written as rho c times c, where c is equal to v4 and rho c equal to rho 4. So this is equal to d by dx4 rho v4 v4 and this is d by dxj rho vj v4. So that is what we have over here d mu rho v mu v4 and mu runs from 1 to 4 and together uh, this equation uh, is the first equation is for i running from 1 to 3 and the second equation is for uh, say mu is equal to 4 because this is uh, for mu uh, sorry I may write this in the, in the following general form d mu t tilde mu nu equal to f nu now the first equation correspond to nu equal to 1, 2 and 3 and the second equation correspond to uh, nu equal to 4. So in that case t mu nu is uh, given in the following way t tilde mu i where i run from 1 to 3 is given by this and t mu 4 is given by that. And that is exactly what 
we have explicitly written here. So for uh, mu equal to 1, 2 and 3, so new indices are column indices. So column number 1, 2 and 3, we have t tilde mu nu given by rho v mu v i plus delta mu i p. So that is first one rho v1 uh, v1 that is column index here rho v1 v2 and again uh, mu is equal to 1 and therefore delta 1 1 which is 1 times p and that is why the p appears here. And in the third column we have a rho v1 v1 corresponding to this index mu mu is the rho index v3 and so on. Now for uh, mu nu equal to 4 t tilde mu nu is given by the second equation. So in that case t tilde mu nu is rho v mu v4 but v4 is equal to c and therefore the fourth column is given by rho v1c, rho v2c, rho v3c and rho v4c. v4 is c and therefore this is equal to rho c square. So uh, we can write uh, the equations, the dynamical equation representing a perfect fluid in a uh, given inertial frame uh, by this equation where this matrix t tilde mu nu is given by this equation 14.2 and one note about f nu so f nu is equal to f i if nu is equal to i that is 1 2 and 3 and f4 is equal to 0 this is what that equation says even though it looked like a tensor equation, this is not a tensor equation because it is not uh, invariant under uh, Lorentz transformations. And now we consider a frame that is moving with that fluid element, that infinitesimal fluid element that we uh, consider at x and t. So this will be moving around and we consider a frame attached to that. So in that frame, uh, the velocity v i are all zero and therefore uh, in the matrix t tilde we see that this term will be zero or only uh, leaving p behind and this one is zero, this one is zero, only the diagonal terms uh, will be non-zero and here we will have a p, here we will have a p and finally here uh, we will have rho c square. Now we are considering a frame of reference uh, which is co-moving with the fluid, fluid element and therefore we are measuring its mass and the pressure in a frame in which these particles in that infinitesimally small fluid element are all at rest. So these are mass and pressure measured in the rest frame of the fluid element. So we denote them by the mass, mass density by rho zero and the pressure by uh, P zero. So in the rest frame of reference of the fluid element, the matrix T tilde becomes the simplified matrix with diagonal elements first three being p0 and the fourth one being rho 0 c square. Now since in this frame uh, the velocity is 0, uh, gamma which is 1 by square root of 1 minus beta square which is v square by c square and since v is equal to 0 this becomes 1 and therefore the four velocity in this frame of reference u mu which are given by gamma v i c where v i correspond to the Cartesian components of this, the Cartesian components of the velocity in that frame of reference and all of them are zero and therefore 
this becomes gamma times 0 and c but since gamma is equal to 1 in that frame this simply becomes 0 0 0 and c now if i take the tensor product u mu u nu by c we see that whenever uh, unless uh, mu and nu are equal to 4 this will be one of them will be corresponding to the spatial component which will be zero and therefore the term will be zero so only when mu equal to nu equal to 4 is this non zero in that case this will become u4 u4 but u4 is c so c square by c uh, sorry if i take uh, u u mu u nu by c square this will be c square by c square is equal to 1 and i will get this result and secondly we know that eta mu nu is uh, this diagonal matrix minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and if i subtract this matrix from this all these uh, elements would be so the diagonal elements are all minus 1 minus 1 minus 1 for the first three rows and columns so uh, in this case these are all 0 so 0 minus 1 will become 1 here and the element 2 2 is also 0 minus 1 so that is 1 this is also 1 now eta 4 4 is 1 but here the fourth four element is also one and therefore this is equal to zero now we compare these two matrices with uh, these two uh, tensors which are say u mu u nu by c square and u mu u nu by c square minus eta mu nu with this expression for the t tilde matrix uh, in the co-moving frame of the fluid element we see that these three diagonal elements are all the same and the fourth element is different from that but there is a difference between uh, this matrix and these two objects first of all this is the inner product of two four vectors sorry the outer product of two four vectors and therefore this is a tensor of type 2 0 contravariant rank 2 now this is a contravariant rank 2 metric tensor and this is also a contravariant rank 2 tensor so the difference between two contravariant two rank tensors is also uh, a tensor of type two zero. So these two are tensors. Now, if I multiply this with p zero and this with the rho c square and add them, the right hand side, that is this matrix on the right hand side, will exactly become that. So we see that. In the rest frame of the fluid element, t tilde can be written as t tilde is numerically equal to uh, u mu u nu by c square minus eta mu nu p0 plus u mu u nu by c square times rho 0 c square. So, uh, we may write this in the following way. Uh, this rho 0 c square and this c square becomes cancelled. And this u mu u nu term can be taken as common from this and that. So, I will get rho 0 plus p 0 by c square. <laughs> u mu this should be u mu u nu 
then minus this term which is eta mu nu is zero so numerically uh, this matrix so numerically this matrix is equal to the components of this matrix is equal to the components of this object on the right hand side but the object on the right hand side is a tensor because uh, this quantity is p0 and this quantity rho0 and also c are all invariant quantities and these objects u mu u nu is a 2 0 type tensor and eta mu nu is also a tensor of type 2 0. So we now define a tensor of type 2 0 uh, capital T mu nu which is defined to be equal to rho 0 plus p 0 by c square times u mu u nu minus eta mu nu p 0 which happens to be equal to this matrix T tilde uh, in T tilde in the co-moving frame of uh, the fluid element and this tensor capital T mu nu is called the energy momentum tensor of the fluid. Now uh, in the co-moving frame of the fluid element uh, v i are all zero and therefore gamma is equal to one and uh, we can have the generalized force which were related by g mu is equal to gamma f mu now uh, we can write the generalized force density uh, g mu as gamma times the uh, the 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 force density in that particular frame so that is gamma times f1 f2 f3 and instead of f dot v by c as the fourth component we will have small f dot v as f dot v by c as the fourth component because we are considering the force per unit volume now this object g mu is a tensor Further, since V is equal to 0 in the co-moving frame, we have this G mu is equal to F, uh, gamma is 1. So, this is equal to F1, F2, F3 equal to 0. So, we see that the components G mu are equal to uh, the components F mu in the co-moving frame of the fluid. So, uh, we can generalize the equation d mu t tilde mu nu equal to f nu to the general form a tensor equation as d mu t mu nu equal to g nu. Now in the co-moving frame of the fluid this reduces to t tilde mu nu and this reduces to f nu and therefore this equation agrees with uh, this equation in the co-moving frame of the fluid. So we see that this equation which is now a tensor equation is a generalization of this and these two agrees uh, in the rest frame of the fluid element. Now, if the force density is equal to zero, that is all F nu are all zero, then we have G mu equal to zero and the equation of the fluid, covariant equation of the fluid will become D mu T mu nu equal to zero. This is the differential form of a conservation equation for the fluid. We have shown that this equation d mu t mu nu equal to g nu reduces to uh, the non-relativistic equation in the co-moving frame of the fluid. But we would also like to know 
like to show that the non relativistic limit of this equation also reduces to uh, the equation d mu t tilde mu nu equal to f nu so that this becomes a proper generalization of this equation so the non relativistic limit correspond to this velocity uh, much much smaller than the speed of light and in this case we we only need to uh, retain terms up to order v by c that is terms of order v by c square can be neglected so in that case gamma which is 1 by square root of 1 minus v square by c square can be written as 1 because we will be neglecting only terms of v square by c square now u mu is given by gamma v i c now gamma is 1 and therefore this can be written simply as v i c now rho the relation between rho and rho zero involves gamma and since gamma can be taken to be 1 we can write uh, the density in uh, in an inertial frame that are moving with uh, that is moving with velocity v with much smaller than c uh, to be same as uh, up to the lowest order that is up to order v by c as rho zero and similarly p as p zero and using this we can show that the t mu nu goes to t tilde mu nu and g mu goes to f, f mu and this has been worked out in detail here we just need to use the fact that we can neglect terms of order v, v square by c square and higher and retain only the most important terms and we can finally show that this equation simply reduces to this original equation uh, in the non relativistic limit so thereby uh, showing that this is a valid generalization of uh, the dynamical equation of a perfect flow rate.